nearly 40% of uh, pediatric urology consults consist of uh, lower intact dysfunction, although the true incidence in Indian outpatient department is not known. But uh, at least in our experience, nearly one third of them, they basically constitute bladder bowel dysfunction in various forms. And uh, this is basically the problem of elimination. When one elimination problem is there, this is usually associated with the elimination of the other system. And in 2014, when the standardization of the terminology was established, and the terminology of dysfunctional elimination syndrome was basically eliminated. And uh, this was replaced with bladder bowel dysfunction. As the name itself denotes that both the GI system as well as the genital endocrine systems are involved as both are interrelated, which we will be discussing in the coming subsequent slides. And uh, why we are becoming so uh, familiar to this BBT. And if we have seen that over the last three decades, all of a sudden we were talking of Hinman syndrome, dysfunctional elimination syndrome, Fowler syndrome, and now this is called as BBT. And there are some specific regions why things are basically uh, emerging. So apparently, and uh, there are specific regions, this could be the price which we are paying on the, at the rate we are getting modernized or the rate of inter industrialization which is happening across the world. And this has been seen there are some certain factors which have been found to be responsible and giving rise to a higher prevalence of BBD in the current children. This could be on account of late age of toilet training, over dependence on the diapers, and smaller in the nuclear families, there are no caretakers for the small kids. Most of the time the kids are staying in the crushes or they are being handed over to the familial aids. And both the parents are young and both are working. And the children who are going, when they are alone, they are usually either busy in Android, computers, TV, and the video games. And on the parents, whenever they are available with the kids, they are usually under the performance stresses at the workplaces. So the etiopathogenesis, it has been seen that it has all three components, hemorrhological, anatomical, and the functional. Interactions between bladder and the bowel are seen. And it is seen that the lower genital tract is tied to GI tract. On the basis of same embryo embryogenic origin, which is endodermal in origin, and up to six weeks gestation, urogenital sinus, and the hide gut empty into a common cloaca. So how much common uh, uh, origin of these two organs? Not only they are neighbors, but even the embryologically, they enjoy so much similarities. Another reason is the functional. This is the effect of the neighborhood. Whenever there is a large picolid in the rectum, which keep irritating the rectum because of over distension and the nociceptor receptors, they are put into the action. And not only this, the effect of load compresses the posture wall of the bladder, which in turn changes the physiological neural stimuli of the bladder and the pelvic floor muscles, which, are, which in turn, which gives voluntary and the involuntary pelvic floor contractures. And that is why these people, these children, they have a problem with non-relaxation non of the external sphincter as well as the pelvic floor muscles when they go to pass the urine. And uh, as we are aware, this is the normal maturation cycle and this is the bladder flip, this is the EMG activity and we start voiding, the EMG almost becomes silent. While in cases of BBT, this is never silent, this is intermittently bursting here we see the EMG activity. This is all effect of because there is a compression of bladder, which is giving over stimulus of the nerve stimuli in, into the genital nervous system, pelvic floor muscles, and the external sphincters. And moreover, when we move forward, so similarly, the evaluation is planned 
keeping in mind that the BBD patient will voluntarily contact the pelvic floor muscles and there is not only embryological as well as the anatomical and the functional interactions between bladder wall, bladder and the bowel, there is so much overlapping of the symptoms. So you cannot BBD case categorically say that this is purely a functional order because there will be so much overlaying of symptoms because of the anatomical cause of bladder outlet obstruction, a neurogenic cause which may be sometimes occult also, may not be severe over, although the BBD this is purely functional also. So identification of possible anatomical and the neurogenic source has to be ruled out. So based on that, you have to at least rule out these two conditions, anatomical and the neurogenic cause before you label it as a functional cause that is BBD. So accordingly, one has to plan history, physical examination and choose the investigative entries so that we do not over investigate or under investigate the children with bladder dysfunction. So history has to be planned accordingly. One need, one need to make a note of right from the developmental milestones and toilet training as we understand is purely a part of milestones and which varies from child to child, from families to families also. And to be specific out of this set of uh, points, we have to give a special consideration to the wording schedule, bowel habits, diet and the fluid intake. And that has to be recorded in the form of bladder and the bowel diaries. And you have to take into the considerations of specifically a psychological or neuropsychiatric comorbidities which have been seen to be associated in nearly 20 to 30 percent of these kids. And this is a simple indigenously made bladder diary bladder and the bowel diary, which is available in the uh, SGPGIA plus pediatric logic portal. And this has been developed in form in both local Hindi language as well as in English language. And uh, one need to fill it accordingly. Uh, the time, uh, fluid intake, urine output, and uh, other events like urge, urge, in canton, uh, urge in, uh, in, uh, incontinence, as well as the leakage of feces if any time felt or the, if the child is constipated that also be to be recorded accordingly like this. So there are more criteria for more objective assessment of evaluation of BBT and follow up and various scores have also been developed such as dysfunctional voiding uh, symptom score as well as pediatric urinary incontinence quality life score. And that may help not only in charting out the treatment, charting out the severity as well as monitoring the treatment and follow up of these kids. As I initially said that the psychological uh, overlay may be found nearly 40 to 50% of these kids. So it is always very important to have a specific evaluation in terms of child psychology which can be done in the form of child behavioral checklist or short screening instrument for psychological problem in any races. These are all available and they should be looked into and given to the child to go through it and to complete it by the evaluating clinician. And the physical examination basically starts with the study of the gait as well as the posture. There are certain specific postures these children with dysfunctional voidings or BBD they acquire while attending OPDs or while they are at school or even at home. And specifically, it has been called as the Vincent Curse. There may be many other presentations also, like in male, there may be pinching of the genitalia, pinching of the uh, prepuce or the panis also is one of the symptoms when this patient is suffer from this condition. And the physical examination has to be planned accordingly. One has to start right from the uh, abdominal examination. You have to look for the bladder lump. You have to also, also palpate the abdomen to find out the loaded bone, muscle tone, mass, or any other abnormality. And similarly, the back has to be examined to find out any hair tuft, a sinus, irregularities in the buttock 
or the contusions as well as any curvature in the spine visible spine genital examination has to be done examine meters because sometimes a tight meters may also give similar uh, uh, symptoms and also examine the female genital to rule out any urogenital sinus anomaly as well as any labial adhesions also and finally one has to do a focused neurological examination in the form of lower ex extremity strain deep tendon reflexes gait peripheral and the anus sensation rectal tone hemocutaneous reflexes and bulbo cavernous reflexes just to get to know that there is no focal neurological condition which might be missed and we are treating child only for functional purposes now after the clinical examination similarly now we get an idea that this functional or anatomical or the neurogenic causes accordingly we have to plan or choose the investigating tool obviously we all, all neurological evaluation they start with urine analysis urine culture and sensitivity and to be specific here one has to maintain the bladder and the bowel diary specifically here has to maintain at least one of the stool chart and here i have taken the example of bristol stool chart along with a euro uh, urogenic and a pelvic floor ultrasonography and bcug if there is a history of recurrent urinary tract infection or there is a some upper tract dilatation so occasionally mri or urodynamics might be needed in selected cases so urogenic is a simple all patient test which can be done Uh, easily and most of the time in most of the centers it is available different patterns will be available here this is the, uh, this is the uh, common uh, bell shaped curve which is available or uh, in the normal uh, setting and uh, other findings which may be the staccato which is usually the common finding in cases of a uh, bbd second may be interrupted interrupted means when it is stretching all the time to the baseline while in staccato there are some irregular fluctuations throughout the voiding although the flow is continuous here the flow is interrupted with every attempt it touches to the baseline and then a new attempt makes the new flow a second and third may be the mixed a combination of staccato as well as interrupted see here it is a staccato here then interrupted then again staccato but still since i say that this is because uh of non relaxation of the external sphincter so the best way of getting a urophonometry is to put in surface emg so that when you do a flowmetry you also uh, this uh, uh, study the activity of the external sphincter to prove your point that the child is suffering from the bbd ultrasonography give lot of information in the form of pre and the post void region urine A bladder thickness more than 5 mm is usually pathological suggestive so there is some problem in the outlet it this may also show a loaded rectum if it is more than 3 cm also so there is some colonic transit problem and finally the pvr if it is more than 20% it's also says abnormality some people take it as a 10% bcug if there is a history of repeated utis or there is a upper tract dilatation on ultrasonography it is always recommended and uh, and this may show many times a dilated posterior thra what has been called as spinning uh, top deformity bristol stool chart their many childhood constipation is common and almost always functional without uh, uh, an organic uh, etiology various stool assessment instruments have been developed the bristol stool form scale and its modifications are frequently used in clinical practice as well as research and uh, nearly from right from 3 to 5 they are considered as the normal consistency and um, if type 1 and type 2 are there then they have to be given due consideration and makes an important part of bbd management accordingly has to be planned and uh, this has to be a global uh, approach and should not include uh, uh, symptomatic treatment and this is in the form of uh, inverted prism what i have been practicing over last uh, one decade and nearly 60 to 70% they need urotherapy and respond it part of it may need some um, assistance of uh, some addition of uh, 
anticholinergics and 20-30% those who do not respond to urotherapy and a combination of pharmacotherapy, they may go for more, uh, they may need little more effort in the form of neuromodulation or uh, application of botulinum toxin. So this is uh, how we plan neurotherapy in these kids. Uh, when the clinical examination is incon inconclusive that we do not find anything on investigation also anatomical neurogenic and we narrow down our diagnosis to BBD. We bladder examination of uh, bladder diary here we start here and educate the child about the normal maturation cycle always and uh, unless the child understands what is normal and abnormal it will be very difficult to train ch uh, child in cases of BBD here and the child must be encouraged to void in a scheduled period and time voiding should also be um, uh, uh, inculcated into these kids and encouraged to void in a schedule of uh, every two to uh, three hours and it is preferably to give a vibrator a time uh, le less with vibrator watch or time older children can use their phone or tablet time uh, timers and time voiding is recommended only uh, while the child is awake to develop the regular voiding pattern. Food uh, and uh, uh, diet modifications has to part and uh, it has to be executed in the form of uh, uh, water has to be given in moderate amount, distribute, e evenly distributed fluid. And I usually prescribe in the dose of 30 ml per kg, those who, the kids who are staying, mo most of the kids are staying indoors. And uh, they do not need more because this is usual understanding in the families that if there is a kidney or bladder problem, give more fluid. And that basically exhausts the kidneys as well as the bladder and precipitates things more adversely. And also avoid irritants like coffee, tea, cola, and the citrus, which also acts as a diuretics in these kids. And those who are uh, constipated, uh, uh, the bowel program this is again indigenously developed uh, bowel program which is also available at uh, pediatric eulogy portal of uh, SGPGIMS uh, already developed in both the local language as well as in English and this consists of most of the locally available fruits which are almost perennially available they can be given to increase the fiber content and uh, of uh, the diet. And uh, the main component of the treatment for constipation include educate. What do we mean by constipation? And basically what are the diets which are leading to or precipitating constipation? And finally, when the child starts, then we start giving this fibrous diet, that disinfection in the form of some laxatives and prevention and the reaccumulation of the feces. And finally, the follow-up. And those who are not responding to this indigenously made uh, uh, this uh, dietary modifications, uh, lexa le laxatives can be given and I usually give this uh, uh, yeah, polyethylene glycol uh, and uh, which usually works in cases of when there is an infection of the stool and most of the kids they respond in a period of four to six weeks and later on they can be maintained easily on the uh, dietary modifications. I am not very happy with the lex, uh, this uh, lactulose because uh, the palatability of this compound is lit little less in smaller kids. And we should also instruct these children not to take too much chocolate, chips, red meat, and uh, spicy and the fried foods, which is usually available in these days uh, as uh, canned uh, materials. And uh, also uh, uh, advise not to take too much foods high in refined carbohydrates such as cookies and the cakes. And these all handy charts should be given to uh, families so that uh, because uh, you can manage the LUTD, but uh, it is very difficult to manage the constipation in these uh, children. And moreover, the most important part of this is along with the potty training, we have to have a pelvic floor exercises as well as the biofeedback because it is not only a constipation, it is just because of the, the voluntary or the involuntary contractions of the pelvic floor or the external instinctors. So we have to advise that uh, there should be a proper posturing, very important, there should be proper arrangement for the uh, defecation uh, within the house also and even in the school should also make some necessary arrangement to find out. 
and while in the toilet training what i pre there are various method to toilet train but i personally prefer which is quite common in india is the assisted infant toilet training or the elimination communication this is quite common in india a, a, even in china and many other asian subcontinent also the, there are many many benefits of this technique reduce cost of the diapers less environmental pollution and increasing parent child um, child bonding also and i am sorry to put this image because this is also showing that new digital india and that is not the right way of training the kids for the toilet and uh, finally the pp this pelvic floor exercise this also needs some kind of bio feedback also in this uh, Uh, children and bio feedback is basically a technique where you can use to learn to control your natural uh, activities and uh, training to re training of related physiological events relaxation exercise may be monitored and and uh, uh, feedback by electrical processor and this electrical processors may be in the form of auditory stimuli in the form of visual or even it may be in computerized stimuli where the child is made to learn the normal physiological uh, uh, response normal physiological response is that you sit comfortably on the toilet seat and relax the, uh, the your perineum and the sphincter and pass the urine and this is how you have to train the child and there are various ways of pelvic floor exercises which can be given ready made charts are also available in most of the outpatient department those who are running pediatric logical cleaning they should be given some time to make them understand to the parents as well as to the child so that they can uh, exercise this at home also and uh, those children who are having features of urge or urge incontinence uh, urge incontinence in the form of overactive bladder they may need some addition of uh, anticholinergics these are some these are the list of various anticholinergics which have been given all the level of evidence of this is law because most of the time you have to dependent on urotherapy rather than on pharmacotherapy though nearly 70% of the patients they respond uh, with, to urotherapy or the behavioral modifications and uh, uh, 20 to 30% those who do not respond they may need some neuromodulation and which is in the form of uh, either uh, stimulation of the nerve or deactivation of the nerve through some um, external stimuli in the form of implants or uh, in, uh, with the help of pulse and this is one of the picture of our patient which is receiving neuromodulation in the form of posterior tibial stimulation and uh, which basically acts through the retrograde stimulation of the sacral ner nerve plexus and ascending text goes to the hypothalamus and controls the bladder over activity and the similarly it can also be done on the surface on for the uh, sacral nerve stimulation and usually the implants for bbd is not recommended unless there is some neurogenic element for that and uh, those who do not respond even to neuromodulation pharmacotherapy or urotherapy obviously they may need more invasive therapy in the form of botox botox has dual role it can be given to the bladder to treat detrusor over activity as well as to the external sphincter and this has been seen once you give into the external sphincter this breaks the vicious cycle and the recovery is faster the, ch the child who has been doing already the pelvic floor exercises being trained on bio feedback if you give botox this sometimes works wonders so this may be one of the thing which can be tried when other things have failed and this is one of the example five year old female which had a straining and micturition with re recurrent uti also had constipation and you see almost the interrupted uh, euro flow and this is the emg done at the time of uh, this uh, uh, evaluation you see she had the tuger over activity as well as severe emg burst here at the time of voiding also and the botox was given and the botox was given for quadrant which can be given cystoscopically or percutaneously also in the female it is not very difficult rather cystoscopically is little more difficult to give in female and then you can give percutaneously pyrethral plane and uh, then uh, this was the effect of uh, uroflometry after this this got stabilized after the application of the botox so i think uh, i end my talk with this and thank you all